Good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host, Krista Burns, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Uh, Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly online event. Um, yes, you can call us a webinar. We won't be offended. <laughs> we try to embrace it as much as we can. <laughs> um, the, we do the show um, every week, every, live every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time. Um, but all of our shows are also recorded, so if you're unable to join us on Wednesdays, that's fine. You can always go to our website online and find all the recordings of all of our previous shows there and watch them that way. Uh, we do a mixture of things here, training sessions, book reviews, um, Q&A sessions, interviews, basically anything related to libraries. Um, we want to share and get it out there um, to our librarians across the state and across the country sometimes. Um, we bring in guest speakers sometimes, and sometimes we have Nebraska Library Commission staff, which is what we have today with us. Um, trio. This, yes. Trio of Nebraska <laughs> Library Commission staff. Well, I'm always here most of the time. Yeah, you can always come. Um, this morning I have um, with me, also here, um, Mary Jo Ryan, who's our communications coordinator here at the Library Commission, and Alana Novotny over on the end there, who is our um, technology access services. Is that right? Librarian. Librarian, yeah. <laughs> I think at the beginning part, right, um, here at the Library Commission. And they're going to share with us about um, Everyone On, a new campaign that started just now. It's a couple of years campaign long. Um, that could be a great opportunity for libraries to get out there and get out the information about what they are doing in their library about various things um, and to get some more resources for your patrons. But what I'll do is I'm just going to hand over to Mary Jo. Would you like the mouse? Oh, that would be good. good. And she is going to take over. Rearranging the yeah. deck chairs here. <laughs> Great. Thank you, Krista. Um, Krista and Alana and I have been talking over the past few weeks about the Everyone On Ad Council campaign. And we think it's a really amazing opportunity. Um, there's some things about it that we feel like Nebraska librarians will really want to know. And, uh, and actually, we do have some um, librarians on, or on this, uh, some people on this, on this show with us today. Um, who are logged in who are not from Nebraska. So I don't think that this is so much Nebraska specific, oh, no. but if, if our, quest, if our um, comments don't relate to your questions or your needs, please do make a note in the questions section and we'll try to address them as, as best we can. Krista is, is monitoring the question section, so we will just stop and, and this will be very informal. Um, first of all, we would just want to say that everyoneon.org um, is, a, is really an opportunity. Uh, it, it's an ad council campaign, which is something that a national campaign that we here in Nebraska alone could never have the resources to do. So it's a very big win-win for all of us. Um, we did want you to be very much aware about how it works. It, it is something that was put together by an organization um, called Connect to Compete. And Connect to Compete is a nonprofit organization um, it's a national nonprofit, and they have a lot of partners. There are a number of partners, a real host of them, including the American Library Association and the Advertising Council, which of course is a very big deal because we can get a lot of mileage and a lot of eyes on libraries because of this Ad Council campaign. Okay, so. The important thing is that it's a multi-year campaign and that this year, the message is, find free training near you. So it's a message to your library customers, to the citizens in your communities, and they are telling people these are the things you can do to find free training near you. You can dial 1-855-EVERYONE-ON, you can text CONNECT to a specific number, or you can visit their website, which is www.everyoneon.org. And their message is pretty much uh, what you see here on the screen. One in five Americans don't use the Internet. Luckily, help is all around. And what they're trying to do is set up a network, a national network of helpers, helping organizations primarily. Um, this does include libraries, and it does include many, many other organizations, the One Stop Job Career Centers, many other organizations. But they are trying to have in their directory all the libraries that are willing to A, provide a class for people, or B, provide one-on-one -on -one coaching and assistance. So they want to make sure that that's really clear, that those kinds of things are available in libraries, sometimes from volunteers, um, not necessarily from trained teachers in your libraries. I know across Nebraska we've been doing a lot of computer skills training, um, and we've been doing it using 
trainers from community colleges who are um, skilled and have a lot of experience training. But this, this message is not really so much that there will be those skilled trainers in the libraries, but that there will be someone who will help you. And many times what can happen is people get their help from a variety of different places. Like Alana pointed out that there are lots and lots of resources on the internet. Um, we will be showing you some resources today where people can go online and use self-paced, self-directed, short video tutorials. And you, all you have to do as a librarian is give them a little help finding them and tell them what some other resources might be if they finish the tutorial. So, I mean, there's just a lot of stuff. It might be just that the library is providing space for a volunteer to come in and help. I mean, that's what we've done for many, many years with income tax assistance, and it's been tremendously successful in some communities, mm -hmm. um, having retired folks who used to work in the income tax field come in and help folks right in the library. So The AARP does that a lot. Yes, and yeah. the, what's that other? The SCORE, the retired, the retired business. Uh, score retired. Uh, I don't know what it stands for. <laughs> but if, if you uh, Google score, you can find out it's a retired business person's organization who provide these kinds of resources. So that's the important thing to think about is it's a multi-year campaign. It's an opportunity for us. We want to make sure that we take advantage of it as much as we can, even though it's not really something we designed or put together. But we're happy to have the resource and really pleased that we've got a partner like the Ad Council, which can really get placement on these ads. We'll talk more about that as we go along. And it's three years, correct? Three years, Alana. Yeah. So this is just year this one. Year one. Right. And the message in year one is find free training near you. Now, this is a screen that you will see when you go to Everyone On. And you want to remember that this screen is designed for citizens. It can be used, of course, by all the librarians or the volunteers in your library, but it's, uh, it's really designed for citizens to be able to do it kind of on their own. So maybe Alana wants to go to that website, and we'll just kind of click through the website. You can see what it's like. Thanks, and Mary here jo. we are. <laughs> Thank you, Alana. <laughs> um, as Mary Jo mentioned, here is the everyoneon.org. Uh, yeah, everyone.on. I can't speak today. This is not good. It's everyoneon.org website. Um, you can see here at the top they uh, have some of these numbers that Mary Jo had already mentioned about how many people are not using the internet. Um, whoops. Our browser's not quite wide enough. There we go. There we go. <laughs> Okay, it's not going to be behaving for me today, but uh, let me, I just want to take a few minutes and highlight some of the, the items on this website. Um, you'll see there's these navigation links at the top here, and they're also repeated on the front page if you scroll down past that banner here. Um, the one that really jumps out, of course, is find free training classes near you. Um, this is a way you can enter a zip code and locate some training opportunities near you. And before I actually go and show you how that works, um, I do realize that sometimes libraries, as Mary Jo said, may not be able to always offer the training um, they want. Or when that patron comes in, you know, you don't have that class scheduled right that minute. Uh, you know, patrons, it seems like, always wants that stuff now. Yeah. So <laughs> what's great about this site is these other four icons here actually are going to take you or the patron to other um, websites and information where they can do that self-paced training. Uh, so it's great so that for that patron who walks in and wants that help now. Uh, you can see the first category here is what is the internet. Uh, and it's getting started. It's broken down into get to know your computer, helpful programs, and where do I begin? Or you can just scroll down to see some additional uh, training opportunities here. Again, these are all online. And it's, it's kind of cool. These are some of the partners, too. Right. Um, so if you notice that the partners on this, are like the GCF Learn Free, that's the Goodwill Industries, and they mm -hmm. have like a ton of resources that are designed mm -hmm. for people to use on their own with just a little bit of help and mm -hmm. guidance and, and help them find it. And that's actually the one I was going to jump out and oh, take good. a look okay. at. Um, you can see here the headings Microsoft. As Mary Jo mentioned, it is from Goodwill. When you go here, you can see the... Um, GCF Learning. 
And one thing I took a look at this site, one thing I liked about this is um, all of these icons here are different training sessions. One that jumped out at to me is the Windows 8 one. Mm -hmm. um, it's possible that you will have patrons coming in who just got that brand new computer running Windows 8. And, um, you know, sometimes libraries don't have that new Windows 8 running yet. <laughs> I don't you know. Do we not... have that running yet? I don't know if we do. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> so, what the great thing about this is, though, there's that Windows 8 tutorial. You can click on it. Um, you know, as a librarian, cool. you don't have to know Windows 8, but you can help them, the patron, get to this point where then they can go ahead and walk through the lessons that talks about learning Windows 8. So that's a, a great thing to keep in mind when you are helping a patron and going to this website. You know, you may not have to know the technology, but as long as you know where to point the patron to, you can still provide them with help. Yeah, I could see even, Eliana, a student, like if you've got like a high school student that wants to do some volunteer time, I know some of the high schools require it. That's this would true. be a great thing. They could set up that they were just going to be there for an hour or two just showing people how to use this. Mm -hmm. I just went back up here, you can see there's other options. There's using the internet. Again, it's broken down to things like, let's, you know, let's get creative, or I want to talk to people. There's a great session here on, you know, social media. Um, intro to email, I took a look at that one. That was a great way to get a person, shows a person how to set up their own email account and get started. Again, it's something you can sit down, the patron down at a computer, help them get started, and then just walk them walk away and let them actually go through the lesson themselves. Mm -hmm. I think that's a lot of what's going to be happening because mm -hmm. so many of our libraries don't have the resources mm -hmm. to put on formal classes. Or that patron may not want to wait and come back to that formal class. Mm -hmm. That's a really important point. One of the things we know about adult learners is that we adults learn in very different ways and some of the adults just can't absorb so much in a class but they absorb a lot by having just a little bit of help from a person who's guiding them and then going through it themselves, Doing themselves yep. when another adult might not learn that way at all yeah. and they need the class setting. So we, it's great that we have these, two, these different kinds of resources. And there's a section on internet safety and last um, section here is getting a job. So all things we've been hearing that customers and libraries are asking for. This is, this is Definitely. really responding to a need. I did want to point out quick on the I want a job. Um, keep in mind, as Mary Jo mentioned, this is a national ad campaign, so you're not going to see just like you know the Nebraska job site listed here. Mm -hmm. But the first link when you want a job is the Career One Stop, and this actually is a site that is done by the down here it says is sponsored by the U.S. Department of Labor, and one of the first links they have up here at the top is job state job banks. So it's really oh. easy to go here, You're assuming mm. they want to stay in Nebraska, you know, find Nebraska. That's what we want them to do, so <laughs> you to look there first. <laughs> and then now, you're just like that, you're out to the Nebraska Department of Labor site where you can just search for jobs in Nebraska. So I just wanted to make sure you realized that was there. And also, just to point out to Alana, on this Nebraska Department of Labor site, there is a, si a section for creating a resume. So if someone comes in and that's all they want to do, um, you can help them get to that. They can go right through it and do it themselves. They have to create a user account, but it's really, it's easy. It's easy. And I was looking around on this Career One Stop site also. Uh, they do have resume information also. So Ooh, and interviewing a, too. Yeah, so yeah. there's a couple different places where you can find that here. Ooh, and cover letters and thank you notes. <laughs> I love thank you notes. <laughs> That's good to remind people. <laughs> okay, back to everyone on. We'll, we'll move away from the jobs here. <laughs> so that kind of gives you an idea of the different online training that's available you can point your patrons to. Um, I'll just let you explore that on your own since that's probably the most beneficial. And then the last thing that I do want to point out is this link to find free training classes near you. You've seen it in a couple different places on the website. Can you enter our zip code here, Mary Jo? All right, we're at 68508, Alana, and I'm hitting enter. All right. Mm. 
Nothing, nothing like a demo that went bad. I know. <laughs> Let me try that again here. There, there we go. go. Um, you can see now it did find these training locations. Now, I think from my point of view, this is probably the most important thing you want to remember and do when you get back to your own computer or have time um, is take a look at this information. And the reason I say that is this information was pre-populated. And um, I think some of the libraries will definitely need to tweak their information. The reason I say that is because we <laughs> entered the zip code of the Library Commission and we have the Bennett Martin Public Library that's one block away. And they provide training. And we know that. <laughs> we know they provide training. And they're not actually even showing up here. You can see there's not a single library in Lincoln. And we know there's multiple branches here in town that do it. Um, and just after playing with it a little bit, we know because the training setting is set to yes. Um, if I change the training setting to any and do a find a location, uh, then you can see now I do get um, the Bennett Martin Library, which is the name of the branch. This is down the street from us. And you can see here um, the information that everyone on is providing says they don't know if they offer any um, training courses. So that's why they didn't show up at first. Um, not a big deal. It's pretty simple to go out and uh, update this information. And that's what I just want to make sure everybody notes and how they can do it and probably takes a little time when they, you know, have can take a few moments and make sure their information is updated. And we'll have this information out when Krista um, puts the links out and stuff in the PowerPoint. Mm -hmm. And I can also show you how to get it, but they, the, um, everyone that on actually has a two-page PDF document that walks you through the process of updating the information. Um, it's pretty simple to do. And I will point out, if you didn't catch the link or find it later, you can always go down here to the bottom of the screen and look for the campaign materials. And Mary Jo is actually going to talk about this site more in depth in a couple seconds. I'm actually going to jump right into the tools and resources for the partner training. And I want to point out that right here, then, is instructions for training tool locator. And that's what we were talking about. Um, there's a link here to download it. I'm going to skip that step. I already went ahead and downloaded it, so I didn't have to wait for the PDF to open. Um, you can see here, it tells me exactly where to go. It tells me the username and password. I'm going to grab that password right here. And it just walks me through how I can either add a new site if your library is not listed, um, how you can review or edit and update your information. And for those people, for whatever reason, if you decide you don't want your library listed, they do tell you here how you can get your site removed. So let's go ahead and I'm going to so that's like a, this. So you can either just update the info or have you completely removed. Yes. That's it's, nice. You know, it's up to your library. And of course, we want to encourage the local libraries to, yeah. to mm -hmm. update the information, make it as accurate as possible. Correct and actually keep their library information on there. But if you really uh, need to remove it, you can. I would say definitely make sure that that don't know says something. Something, <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Know, yeah. Exactly. I mean, even if it just says, we'll help local residents access online training. I mean, that, that's just showing people what's online for them to use. Oh, sorry. No, that's okay. <laughs> I'm just fine. I kind of failed in my typing duties. I was so busy talking. Oh, and I pasted the wrong thing into the wrong box, so your talking just covered it up. Oh, okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> hey, happy to help. So I just logged into the, path, into the site now where you can update your information. Um, you can see it just brings up default information to start for start with. But what you want to do is search for your library. So Mary Jo six eight five zero eight, right? Correct. And it's already brought up the results. Oh, okay, that's here. fast. So I'm just going to pick on the Bennett Martin Public Library since it's one I've been talking about down the street. You can see it's listed here, and there's an action mm -hmm. to edit the information. Mm -hmm. And it's really straightforward. You can see here there's just boxes you can fill in. Mm -hmm. The address information looks okay. Um, you can enter your website. You can enter the URL for your Facebook and Twitter if you have those. Um, if you do enter those, uh, they will show up. Oops. <laughs> now we got it going on. 
Let's see right here. And I'll just go back here. The little icons for Facebook and Twitter will appear right here under the library's name. Oh, okay. There it is. Got, got too many tabs open now, Mary We Jo. We do. I see that. <laughs> it's sort of but, a metaphor for my life. Everyone can identify with that. Yes. Um, next section here is clearly labeled facility information. Now, this one I find kind of amusing for the Bennett Martin Public Library. Are they open to the public? I'm uh, not They're sure. not sure about that mm -hmm. one. So this is why I think That's it's important you want to for everybody to get in here and just check their information because obviously they are open to the public. But, of course, they're already set to have um, internet, internet access. access to the public. Mm -hmm. So I'm not quite sure how that works. <laughs> but well, well, just, it's just <laughs> a few little changes, a little tweaking, as they really like Krista went said. They safe route with their information. They didn't yeah. want to assume. There's not really even a parking lot you can sit in and use it at Ben and Martin. No. So, but um, it does ask things like number of public computers, um, are there appointments required for training, uh, you can see additional questions here, and it looks like a lot of these have been set to not sure. That must be the default. I believe so. It's either Makes yes, sense, no, yeah. or we don't know, which is not sure. Mm -hmm. uh, training site information, do you have scheduled training available? I know they do, so they could change that to yes. Um, online training, I'm sure they would be happy to help you sit down and get started on some of those yeah. pl lesson plans and stuff that I was showing you earlier. Again, pretty basic questions here, easy to answer. And the last thing on the page is operating hours. Go ahead, and when you're done, just go ahead and save your location details, and that's it. So it's a pretty quick fix. Very quick. Pretty quick fix, mm -hmm. yeah. So we really want to encourage Nebraska libraries to do that quick fix on your information. And the PDF document will help walk you through the whole process. I won't talk about how you can, you know, add other locations and stuff, but again, it's all in this PDF right here, so. I should, last thing before I turn it back to Mary Jo, I did want to point out that it does take um, three business days to get the database updated because they have a person who actually looks at the information before they put it live. Ah. So it's not going to be an instant fix. Don't expect to see it right away. Exactly. So. Perfect. And that's good to know because... Obviously, this login thing you're just showing, that's just, that's not, what's, I, want, I don't want to be bad about it. That's it's public. It's a generic password. It's yes. public information. Like anyone, oh, anyone can do that. I see yeah, what you're it's saying. Not like it's a generic it's not password. Like you ask for the password and they send you a, a private one right. for you. But then, you know, what's uh -huh. the... They'll stop That's it. the worst someone can do. Say you're open yeah. 40, you know, 24 hours a day. I mean, yeah. we a, lot, a lot of the stuff that comes up is simply little check boxes. So mm -hmm. I'm not, you know, and with the person looking at it. That's, yeah, that's what's that's good. good. It's that they vetted. Have a, that's that's really good. Yeah. yeah that's it's a good real thing. human eyes look at right. it. Yeah. You do have to go into the PDF to find the password and stuff. So. Mm -hmm. Well, we're about halfway through our hour, and I'm just going to have to ask the folks that are out there if you have any questions. I mean, we will be going over some of the campaign materials. We'll be going over some more uh, resources. But if you have any questions or comments, would you please let Krista know by raising your hand if you want to talk with a microphone. We'd love to hear your voices. Or if you don't want to talk with a microphone and you'd like to just tap or type a question <laughs> in the question box or a comment, please do so. We got anything that you want to share, Krista? Um, not just yet, but okay. I will um, interrupt as I get them <laughs> appropriately. All right, then. Okay, we'll go back to this PowerPoint slide, and that's what Eliana just talked about. Okay, here we are at the Partner Toolkit. Now, they're, they're considering, um, they have, of course, a host of national partners. I, I mentioned ALA, I mentioned the Advertising Council. Um, they have a, a lot of, of national partners, but I did want to make it clear that they are also considering all the local organizations that help people access the internet, learn how to use computers as partners as well. And so they have created a toolkit at the Ad Council page, which I think is really pretty useful. You can see, um, as Alana mentioned, there are PSAs, public service announcements, and localizable materials. There are tools and resources for partners and trainers, and then there's another section called Spread the Word. And here you find, um, in that, those PSAs and localizable materials, we'll take a look at what you could customize it for your own community. 
um, postcards and flyers and PSAs for television in English and Spanish and some radio PSAs and web banners. Um, there's also, if you are able to do some talking to organizations in your community, and there's talking points and um, curriculum, and then there's just basic information about how to, to get the word out through social media and other, other ways. And this how to engage a friend is kind of cool because if you have a volunteer and they don't exactly know how to get started, this will help. So basically I'm going to suggest you go to the Ad Council uh, page and we're going to do it right now. And that is this one, I think. Nope. Is it? Yes, it is. Okay. Go to the Ad Council campaign and you click on this PSAs and localizable materials. And you will find what some of these things are. There's posters, postcards, table cards, flyers. So you can see there's quite a lot of great stuff. And again, you can do some of those things with it. Now where am I? Am I at the Ad Council? I'm not, am I? Yes, you are. Yeah, I am. Okay, good. Mm -hmm. That's where I wanted to be. Okay. Uh, where's my television? There it is, television. I want to show you a couple of these TV PSAs. They can be run. You can run these in uh, your cable markets, your local public access channels. You can ask anybody to run them for you and you can use these as little trigger videos to help you talk about some of this in your, your community organizations. So here we go. See how quick they are? And they're in Spanish as well. There are 30 second versions too, correct? If they want yes. just a slightly mm -hmm. longer. Let's do this one. This one's English, I think. Oh, you could also share it with your friends, apparently. <laughs> I mean, it really, I think, helps to tell the story of why libraries are so involved with helping people get access to the internet. That I mean, this is so important to our communities. Now, Elena, didn't you say you saw a commercial online? I did. I on saw TV the, the one original time? one. Um, I believe I was watching Animal Planet. And it was oh, on the weekend. I think it was on the weekend, too. Right. So these have already been by, obviously, the Ad Council has already started putting these out there. Themselves. Yeah. Now, we did not know we were one of the markets. I mean, <laughs> because it looked like it was just city mar uh, cities that were the early markets for this mm -hmm. campaign. But when Atlanta saw one on a cable channel, I mean, that tells us, I think, that we could be seeing these in our communities Everywhere. at any time. And I think that's just amazing because after 30 years of trying to get PSAs on television, I can tell you, getting a PSA on the weekend to be run during the daytime, not at 3 a.m., is pretty phenomenal. And, of course, that's the power of these national partners, that they're able to do this kind of thing. So let me go back and see. Anybody have any questions about that? We do have a question going back to updating your info. Uh -huh. Let's Actually, go back to that then. Um, and uh, one of our librarians here, Jan Sears, wants to know, does each library set up their own username and password in that system? Is there any way to then reset something that's specific to yours? Not that I saw. If you look at the PDF on the website, it just clearly says that here's where you need to go, here's the username, and here's the password that you should use. So and once you're in there, there's nowhere. There is nowhere that I saw anywhere or any mention yeah. of setting up your, your own account. So, okay. Well, let's do this. I'm going to stay right here. Um, I also wanted to point out the radio resources. Again, I think, let me just do that. Okay. So just type the job website address here. That's it. Then you enter what job you're looking for there. Electrician. This is Peter. 
Recently, you got help going on the internet for the first time to look for a new job. Okay, then you just hit search and... In the past, Peter's gotten work through people he knew, but he heard there were more jobs online. There we go. These are all for me? Uh-huh. Really? He had no idea just how many. I can't believe it. This one looks good. Peter's thinking the internet might be for him after all. And this is just one website. Wow. Why didn't I do this sooner? See what the internet can help you do at everyoneon.org or call 1-855-387-9166 to find a free training class near you. Brought to you by Connect to Compete and the Ad Council. Okay, so just type the job website address here. Oh, oh I went back. And I think it just went started over. So, I mean, again, this is something that it'd be very simple to get your local radio station to play for you. I mean, I know I, we have had here in Nebraska such good luck with the libraries in partnership with their local radio stations. They are very willing to play these kinds of PSAs, especially when they're all done like this. So that's another option. This is a little harder. Now we're talking about um, getting stuff printed, and there's a little, there's a little money involved, obviously. Uh, particularly if we start talking about billboards and that kind of things. But truly, there, the material, a lot of the work and a lot of the money has been spent. The research has been done to tell us what kind of message people are willing to hear. The money has been spent on ad professionals to develop these materials. Now all we have to do is customize them to Nebraska. So once again, if we can get some of these other materials out, that will help reinforce it. Um, web banners, we're, we're very familiar with how you use that on your website. And then we're back to the localizable materials, which is where we started. The posters, the postcards, the table cards, the flyers, things that you can use and you can localize right in here with your library information. So do, if anybody has any questions about these materials, I would be more than happy to talk to you personally or to talk about it right now. Just type it in or stick your hand up and we'll hear your voices. We'll go on to tools and resources. I just wanted to point out some of the things. Alana was on this sheet earlier when she found the instructions for the training locator tool. I wanted to point out some other things that are here. Here's some information if you decide to talk to your city council about this or to another organization in the community. The campaign fact sheet will be useful. I think this social media guide is great. I know a lot of you have got really active Facebook pages and you can use this to help you figure out some ways to use your Facebook pages. I like I looked at that and I liked that they gave you actually suggested text yeah. to just put into mm -hmm. a tweet or into a Facebook um, update or something so they've kind of composed some things that you could use. I thought so too, Krista. I mm -hmm. thought that makes it so easy. And of course then once you start you think of other things mm -hmm. too. Um, how to get PSAs placed, very good suggestions. And then again key talking points. There's just a lot of good resources here. There's even a curriculum on Internet Basics, but as Alana mentioned before, you may or may not be actually providing something like this. You might be providing um, someone who helps people just get on, into the online self-paced courses. And an optional evaluation and, and participant certificate. I'm going to go to this digitallearn.org in a minute because this is another resource I really wanted to stress as a resource for librarians who are trying to um, assist people but maybe aren't really ready yet to do classes, formal adult education type classes, or maybe you are but you also know that you need to assist people on a one-on-one -on -one coaching setting. But first, let me go back here and show you this. I want... There. Um, if you can see this, uh-oh, what did I do? Okay. If you can see this, I think this is a, a, a very interesting slide, and it's, it's on the everyoneon.org site. The slide basically says that we can help friends get online. And this, the reason why I like this is it's not just us helping library customers. It's us being a good friend. And we may actually know some people in the community who are willing to take some time to be a friend in the library and we may have friends of the library groups that might want to take this on as a little project to basically not necessarily teach a class, but just help a friend. And these are just six steps for helping a friend, which basically is what we've been talking about. 
helping friends in our libraries or having, having your library friends help their friends in the library. And it's a great way for a friends group to build their membership. Um, one of the libraries here in Nebraska told me that um, they've been doing, having a community college person do classes um, throughout the BTOP grant. Some of you know about our um, library broadband builds Nebraska libraries um, grant. And I, I really thought that was a cool idea. They've been doing these classes. They want to continue them. They didn't know how to keep them going. So the friends group said they would pay the salary of the, the community college staff person to continue to offer the classes. And they would ask the people who came if they wanted to leave a donation. And if the donation they wanted to, it could be a membership in the friends group. And I think what's going to happen is that's really going to build their friends group and it's going to make for a more diverse friends group. So I think it's a really cool idea. It's another way to look at this as a friend building activity. Um, this is just a resource list for everyone on. It's also uh, information about the Ad Council, um, about a, a uh, discussion and frequently asked questions from Web Junction about this, and also about digitallearn.org, which is what we're going to talk about next because it's another resource. This is a resource that's a, a, a partnership that a PLA has been funding, Public Library Association, and it's really got two things here. It's got a section for learners, which people can go into and can do um, little curriculum modules. They're on video and online and do those just on their own. And then it's got a section for those that help learners, the teachers or the coaches that, that are maybe in the library helping a learner. So let me just go to that website. And it's right here. And you can see that there's a ton of resources here. If you're a learner, you click here. And there's these great little short sections on things that people want to know how to do. How to use a web, the internet to find, find things on a web website. How to, and Lana mentioned this one, intro yeah, like to this email. One. This is a really good one. First of all, they have a handout you can look at. Oh, I'm sorry I didn't do this earlier. That's okay, you can do them. It's not, it's going pretty fast. We'll just fast. keep talking a little yeah. more. Yeah, anyway, they have a <laughs> handout, and it's, it's excellent. It goes through all kinds of information about it, and then, let's see, I think that opened a new browser, didn't it? Yeah, and then you can start the class, and we'll just start for a second or two so you can get an idea of what it's like. Oh, would you like to resume where you left off? Sure. <laughs> In order to receive emails, you'll have to have your own private email account which is an electronic mailbox just for you. You also have to have your own email address so people will know where to send you an email. Like a real address, the email address has to be typed in correctly or the other person will not receive their mail. An email address will always have three parts. It cannot have any spaces in it. The first part of the email address is the person's username. Well, this kind of gives you an idea how basic this is. I mean, this is really basic. But it's, it's something for people who can learn, who like to learn this way, and who have a little time, as you can see, 14 minutes, and who can just kind of go through the lessons and learn how to set up an email account. And so this just gives you an idea of what's available right now. The people at, at digitallearn.org are just dynamite. They're going to continue adding to this, this section. And so the next time you look at it, there might be eight classes, there might be ten classes. Um, it's an it's a amazing dynamite community of educators and learners. I really enjoyed finding out about this. It's a great resource. The next section of it is how is for people who want to help learners, people who want to teach or who want to coach. And if you look at this, it's really great because there's all kinds of discussion going on here. Like there's a discussion here about evaluation methods, a discussion about recruiting computer lab volunteers, um, the web literacy standards. Oh, here we go. Here's a description of a group that Catherine Brockmeyer from Nebraska. We have a Nebraska group, so anybody who wants to join can join the Nebraska group. It's very easy to sign up for this, and this is a great way to communicate with other people or just lurk here and see what other people are talking about and what, mm -hmm. and what other libraries are doing to help folks in their area. 
So, I mean, again, this is the, the somebody who's from Goodwill, the Goodwill um, LearnFree.org site. This is a dynamite site. That's one of the ones that Alana showed you. There's tons of resources for people to work on, on their own. As you can see, we don't need to reinvent the wheel. The wheel's there. We just need to get on it. <laughs> and sometimes it's kind of a balancing act on that wheel, but it's, it's there. There's a lot going on. Um, I guess at this point, if there are questions about this, we could certainly chat about it. Yeah, does anybody have any questions, comments, uh, suggestions for anyone else of, of resources maybe you found that can help this kind of thing? Type them into your questions section of your GoToWebinar interface, or say you want to be unmuted, I can do that, and you can use your microphone. Um, as I noted when, when I was on the site, you can log into the community. You just go ahead and sign in. And put your profile together and you're in the community, you can join groups in the community. I know I joined the uh, communications and awareness group and the Nebraska group. I joined the Nebraska group, of course. Yeah, I didn't know there was the Nebraska one until you told me about it. I thought yeah. that was pretty cool. i got to join that and see what they're doing there. Yeah, I think it'll be real fun. Um, again, there's just this, this is just one resource I found in Adult Learning Handout that I just loved because a lot of people know a lot about learning, but don't know very much about how different adults are and, and our way of learning. I mean, it's all common sense, but when you start looking at it, it's like, yeah, it's not like teaching children. And again, so many people like to learn on their own at, when they get to be our, our age <laughs> or older. Other, whoops, what did I do? <laughs> I messed up. Uh, um, yeah, yeah. There we go. Other thoughts or questions? Um, nothing's come in yet. Anybody have any questions about the presentation, about any of these resources we've shown? I guess one thing I might do is go back to these resources and remind everybody that they're here, that this is the Everyone On resources that are here to help you, everyoneon.org the Ad Council, everyone on .adcouncil.org, the Web Junction resources, and this is kind of a long um, URL, but if you just remember, it's webjunction.org and it's everyone on. So if, I think if you search that way, you'll find it. And I've yes. bookmarked it in our Delicious account as well at the Library Commission here, so when I put up the recording for this, um, we'll have the direct link to that, but it'll also be in the slides. It'll also be included when we do the recording, so um, you have it that way too. Thanks, Kristen. But yeah, actually, I did just do that to find the link myself, now that you mentioned it. I just went to webjunction.org, typed in everyone on, and, and it, you, brought, it up brought it right up. This one and a couple other things. And some other ones. Too, okay, yeah. good, good. Excellent. Excellent. And then digitallearn.org, both the digitallearn.org slash learn which is the great resources for those learners and, and library customers, and then also digitallearn.org slash teach mm -hmm. for you or your volunteers or your friends group. We do have one comment. Um, the librarian says, um, these are absolutely great resources. I really like that it helps librarians who maybe aren't ready to teach official classes. Yes. Thanks for sharing these. Yes, I think that's kind of the idea, and like you said, not having to invent the wheel. This, People are coming to the libraries anyways needing help. Um, you guys know that. You've encountered it. Um, <laughs> We've heard. I'm sure a lot of people are like, I don't know what to do. I can't learn how to, what Windows 8 is all about because I don't have one. We don't have them here. I don't have it at home. <laughs> I wouldn't have a clue what uh, to begin teaching someone about how to use their brand new computer that they just bought. But the fact that these organizations have already put up that resources that we can then just use and point people to is just makes things, I think, so much easier at the library. We can't afford to learn it ourselves at the time. Can't afford to hire a like you I mean, the friends group that did it with that community college. Wasn't that a cool idea? A great idea, but not everyone has the money to do that. I know, and that's why I think these organizations have done this because they realize that they know they're involved with ALA and libraries, and they know um, what the libraries need. So the main thing that, uh, as Alana mentioned, to take away from this is. Don't be shy. Hop right on here. Get to that locator tool and make sure it says what you want it to say about your library. And um, the other point they make on, on everyoneon.org is you can also, if you know of other organizations in your community that does this, if there's a community action agency that's offering classes or that's offering help using uh, government resources online, be sure they enter their information in too. So it's for your zip code, 
it's accurate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so so if there isn't a group or a list that has, that they added by default, they can be added. They that. can be. Yeah, the new ones can be added. So it's not just restricted to who they found. It. Yeah. Correct. Right, because they pre-populated this, but I think the, you can tell by the way it's pre-populated, they didn't expect it to stay that way. Mm -hmm. They expected it to be changed by the, the organizations that are doing the work. Mm -hmm. And that's the way it should be, so that's great. Yeah. Yeah, that, we, yeah. Yeah, that they, you put out your own info. Yeah. Yeah. So thanks, everybody, for joining us today. What are we doing next week, Krista? Um, yeah, um, actually, if you go to um, browser. Oh, okay. Where just, am I supposed to be? Oh, uh, just go to your browser. Get rid of that. Just, yep, we're fine. And, uh-oh, what's that? Just click uh, on the web. Uh, is there a Yeah. Okay. Just type in. Um, I'm get rid of that. Oh. <laughs> okay. Mm. Just type in Encompass Live in the Google box. <laughs> the wrong person is at the keyboard <laughs> now. <laughs> it's okay. Okay. Um, yeah, okay, so thank you very much, okay. everyone, for attending this morning. There we go. Um, and thank you, um, Mary Jo and Alana, for collecting all this this information and resources so that we can uh, get the get the word out about this. Um, oh, we have a comment. Um, that was really great. Thanks. Kendra Morgan is on the line, actually, out there. Um, who's oh, Kendra, actually part hi. Of Web Junction. <laughs> Kendra, hi from Web Junction. Junction. <laughs> So um, she was watching what we were doing. Um, so that will wrap it up for this morning's show then. Um, it has, is being recorded, so that will be available later. And like as I said, the PowerPoint presentation and all the resources will be put out um, with it as well. Um, so that's for today. I hope you'll join us next week when our topic is libraries lending e-readers, not e-books, e-readers, the actual devices themselves. We have a few public libraries here in Nebraska that, I'm, that are doing it. I know there's other ones across the country as well. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to have some of those um, libraries on to talk about how they're doing it, why they're doing it, what the, what the deal is with the actual readers that they're sending out. Oh, that's really going to be interesting. I was out at an open house at a library, and they had a bunch of e-readers set up. And we're showing people how to use them and telling them they could take them home and with mm -hmm. already pre-populated with books. Exactly. That's very cool. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll see how some of our public libraries in Nebraska do. And I know universities are doing it as well. Um, in this particular one, I focus on getting some public libraries together to talk about their experiences. That sounds like a great show. Oh, yeah. So hopefully you'll join us for that next week. Um, also, Encompass Live is on Facebook. So if you are a Facebook user, there we are, um, you can like us on Facebook and you will get announcements of when we add new shows, when the recordings are available. I do a little reminder in the morning of a show letting everyone know that the, what today's show is and that you can log in um, on the fly to join it if you didn't register ahead of time. So um, if you are a Facebook user, go ahead and like us there and keep up with what we're doing. Other than that, we are wrapped up for this morning. Thank you very much for attending, and we will see you next week. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thanks, everyone.